Okay, so we uh, start discussing the uh, word processing software last week. So um, we get to know that word processing means they are to design or to do the documentation uh, kind of work. And um, there are many different kinds of uh, word processing softwares in the world. And uh, we get to know what kind of things that can be done through this uh, word processing software as well as we get to know some several word processing softwares, which is given by different kinds of companies. So um, the one that we are going to use is the Microsoft Office Word package, right? Um, here in the textbook, uh, they have told you uh, the, uh, the other particular word processing softwares as well as like the uh, word processing softwares that we can find it uh, on the web, right, or like uh, on, the, on the cloud, right, like the Google Docs, right? So, and uh, on the book, they have uh, introduced you both Microsoft Word, uh, the 2010 version, plus uh, LibreOffice uh, Writer, uh, particular open source software. So, uh, we are not going to uh, discuss the LibreOffice Writer, uh, much in deeper, we just get to know that there is, like there are many other word processing softwares are there in the world. So uh, we just uh, move with the Microsoft Word and uh, we will be having a discussion regarding the tools we can find inside it. And when it comes to your examination, uh, they are just asking for a common tool. So like, uh, through the icon of the tool, you will be able to uh, have the idea. So it doesn't matter what is the name that it carries. So like, uh, like if you take word processing, or like the Microsoft Word, and the uh, LibreOffice Calc, both got uh, similar facilities, but in different names. All right, so. Uh, Better you uh, learn what are the functionalities uh, from uh, this kind of an icon, right? And anyway, in any software through the icon, you will be able to have the idea very clearly what kind of a task that this is going to do. Right, so um, what are we going to do now? It's like uh, we are moving to the Yes, ah yes, Sanoshi. I completely forget that uh, I told you something about the uh, examination. Neither. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, with the holiday and all these things, I just forget. Uh, hold on, people. Now I'll give you this week as well, right? Uh, because it is there. It is. Uh, uh, connect with the uh, uh, learning management system, the LMS, right? So, uh, yeah, so like I'll give you this week as well. We'll go through the uh, practicals of the word just for this week. By next week, we will definitely have the examination. Right, so um, yeah, and the, uh, the registering part, we need we need a particular registering part for the uh, LMS as well, which I couldn't do during the work uh, during the last week. So uh, I better uh, have the details of yours uh, to get registered into the uh, LMS. And in the uh, other hand, I'll try my, like, like uh, is there anyone who does not have a Gmail account? Anyone who does not have a Gmail account? Everyone got right? That's great. Okay, so... Uh...
Okay, then it won't be a problem. I'll, I'll configure it to be uh, logged in uh, with the uh, Google accounts, right? Uh, if not, I will uh, collect the details through the uh, WhatsApp, right? So it's a, it's a simple uh, name and an email that I want in case if I need that. If not, uh, you can directly get into the uh, system using your Google credentials, right? Like the Google, using the Google username and the password, you will be able to uh, log into the uh, system, right? So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it on that manner, right? Today we'll uh, discuss about some practicals and by next week, we'll go for the uh, examination, right? Okay, so um, now it doesn't matter, uh, like I said, uh, whether it is the LibreOffice Writer or the uh, MS Word that we are going to use, it's the same thing uh, or, the, or the same facilities that is given by the word processing software, right? So let's just go to the uh, MS Word. Right, and from there, we discussed about this interface last week, where we uh, are getting some templates, some recently opened documents, right? And uh, we are going to work with the blank document right over here. Right, so we, uh, once we open it, what we can see is, we can see the quick access toolbar at the top, and the name of the document, which is given by the word until we save it. And uh, in, in my version, I'm using 2019 version. Uh, it require like, like it, it, it asks us to uh, log into the uh, Microsoft account to use the uh, particular Microsoft Office package. And the three common buttons close the restoring and the minimizing buttons are there at the right side. And like under that, these things, these things are called the tabs or the ribbons, which contains different kinds of tools, which will help us on making a document, right? So basically, uh, like we can do the typing using the keyboard and we can do the formatting using these type of tools. So there are different types of tools under different kinds of ribbons, as well as when it comes to a one ribbon, a one particular ribbon is being divided into several different groups, right? And that group is given a specific name, right? As you can see in the home tab, the first group that you can see is clipboard. The second group that you can see is the font. It is like as the very last line of the group, right? And the third group is called the paragraph. Fourth group is called the styles. And the last group is called the editing, right? So likewise, uh, it has different kinds of ribbons under a ribbon or like a particular ribbon has been divided into several different groups with where, where it has a separate name. And uh, when it comes to the uh, working area, as you can see, there is a ruler, like a horizontal ruler and a vertical ruler, right? So you can uh, hide these rulers if you don't want. Uh, by using the view ribbon, right? If I click, click on the view ribbon, uh, inside the view ribbon, there is a group called show, right? And in, in, in that ribbon, in that group, I got ruler, grid lines, navigation pane, right? So now you can see the, the checkbox in front of the ruler is being checked or is marked as available. And if you take out the correction mark in front of it, now the ruler is gone from your screen, 
right, won't be uh, able to make it, right? Or like, um, no, you won't be able to see it when the ruler is disabled. So if you want to see the ruler, if you cannot see a ruler on your document, just go to the view tab and click in front of the ruler so it will be shown. As well as in the show group, there are some things called grid lines, right? So this will help you if you are drawing some mathematically or like a geometrically uh, uh, very keen diagrams or like very uh, specific diagrams, right? So if you don't want, you can get rid of guidelines. Right, so the navigation pane is to navigate how much of pages and uh, what's the result of them. Right, so uh, that's what you call the navigation pane. So you can get rid of those things by unticking in front of that particular word. That is a check box. Okay, people, is that clear? Yes, sir. Right, great. Okay, so I'm moving to the home tab again. Now, inside the home tab, uh, like before the home tab, there is something called file, right? Now this file will take us to the very first page that we saw at the beginning of this session. Right, so, Inside the file menu, this is the file menu. We can have a new document, we can open a document. Uh, if you want, you can have the information about these documents and you can do a save and uh, different kinds of uh, ways that we can uh, do a save as well as there's something called save as. So it is there to save a particular document in different color format, right? So like, uh, it's like saving a word into a PDF, right? So that can also be done using the save as option. Right, so those are the things that uh, we can see with the uh, save and save as, specifically save as. And uh, the print, share, export, choose, those kind of things, just like one way of uh, doing the things uh, in a way that it is convenient for you, right? So uh, the major task, which is editing a document and saving it or storing it uh, can be done in the way we have discussed. So, uh, First, I would like to show you how to save a particular document. All right, so uh, saving. People, hold on a second, hold on a second.
Okay, sorry for that. All right, so then, as we discussed in, so in the working area, you can do any kind of work and that can be formatted using the tools that we are, that they have provided us here. And at the bottom of the screen, they have given you a status bar, which indicates how many pages are there in your document. So in my document, it's just one page. So it shows page one of one. That means uh, the page one means the current, the number of the current page. Of one means how many pages are there? Right? Of how many pages, what is the page that we are in? And here it gives you the word count, right? When you are typing something, you can get a clear idea how many words are there, right? Word count is very important when it comes to assignment works because when you are receiving an assignment, in, in an assignment, it always says uh, like this much of word should be there, right? So giving the word count will be easier for those kind of tasks. And again, the language that we are using and this accessibility, it says whether the software is okay to be run, like, uh, is, it, like is it fully loaded, right? And when it comes to the right side, we talk about these living modes, the reading mod, and the page layout or the print layout and the web layout. We usually work with the print layout, which shows us how the document is going to be when it is being printed. And this is called the zoom controller. Using these pluses and minuses, we can change this, uh, the percentage of zoom. Now it is in the 100%, that means the original uh, nature is showing on the screen. If you put the plus, it will zoom in. If you press minus, it will zoom out, right? And, and be sure, be very careful to work with the zoom controller set to 100%. Otherwise, if you set it to something, some, some bigger percentage, you will have the uh, idea the output is going to be something like that. But it's not actually the output that you are going to see. It is a zoomed version of, a, uh, of the output that you can see. So when you're making the printout, you will be receiving an unexpected uh, hard copy. Uh, then later you will realize, oh, okay, it is because of the uh, zoom in one. So I thought it is the fonts are on this big, but they are small due to this zoom in version or like the zoom in view. Okay, is that clear everyone? Yes, sir. Right, great. So let's move to the uh, tools now. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about this font group, right? So. Now, when you are working with the word, the first thing that you need to know is there is this something called cursor, the, the blinking one that you can see on the screen, it is called the cursor. It is the place where I start typing the characters, right? So wherever the cursor is placed, if you type something, those characters will be printed on the screen from the cursors onward, right? And when you are doing or when you are applying any particular formatting, in most of the cases, you have to select the specific part that you need to be formatted, right? 
in, in, in simple terms, if you need to uh, give a particular color to the very first three letters, so you have to select the very first three letters and then you have to apply the formatting. So how we are going to select a particular content? Right? There are several different ways, right? So, um, I'll take a small uh, sentence. All right, I, I take my pet's name is Nisa. All right, so uh, if you are going to apply something to the entire sentence, either you have to start it from the very first letter and click and drag your mouse to the other end. Or you can start it from the very right end and click and drag it to the left end. <laughs> or else, if you triple click on this, if you triple click, it will straight away select the entire line. All right? And again, if you want to uh, select only the word my, so we know how to select it now. I started from the left side. Again, click and drag it to the right side and start it from the right side. You can uh, copy it to your left side, right? Even you can select a single letter as well. So these kind of selection can be done. All right. And what are the formattings that we can apply to these things? So now we know how to select the things. So let's see what are the formattings that we can apply. So in this sentence, if I need to change the font type, of a particular con content, we can use this font type tool, which shows several different numbers. There are, there are hundreds of names. Even Singhala, like if you are installing Tamil, that can also be shown over here. All right, so this type of list or like this much of list will be there for you to choose whatever the uh, font type you want, all right? When it comes to the Singhala, you should know like the, it is not very much applicable. Like we can't directly convert uh, an English let, an English lettered word into a Singhala lettered word. Like if we, uh, but uh, first we have to type in Singhala itself, then we can. Yeah. Uh, then we can apply fonts. different kinds of fonts. Yeah, it's, it's not like that. It's not like this. Like if you type orange in Singhala and uh, you select it and uh, choose a Singhala font, it won't show you Doda, right? Or Tamili part, right? It just converts into something which, is, which has no any meaning. Right, so to have things in Singhala and to format things in Singhala, first you should know how to type in Singhala. Then you will be able to apply different kinds of Singhala fonts for those. Right, so for the moment, I'm just uh, selecting this, uh, yeah. That uh, name is a little bit uh, awkward, right? It says uh, oh, Bauhaus. Yeah, yes, yeah, Bauhaus ninety three. So I just select it. So you can see that the word my is just different from the rest of the things, right? And as well as I can select the entire sentence, and I can change the font size. 
from here, there's a list of sizes, which are predefined, as well as I, I need to show you something. I'll take out the uh, magnifying glass. So like when I'm moving my cursor along these uh, values, you can see the fonts are getting bigger, All right? So this is called the live preview. We have not click and select any different particular uh, size, but just take, you know, just hovering our uh, mouse pointer on the top of the values. All right, so like uh, if we choose 36, it will apply this particular size, but still it is not being. If I take the mouse out, those changes were rolling back to the original way. All right. So if I choose 36 and if I click on 36, so it will show me the fonts size in 36. And again, remember when you choose different kinds of fonts, it shows you different kinds of sizes sometimes. All right. So that should also be in your mind, like sometimes due to the nature of the font, it can be different in size. All right. And uh, so we know about the type, we know about the size and these two, this A and this A. So it has some arrowheads at the top. One is indicating going up and one is indicating going down. So these things are there to increase the font value using that. And decrease is there to decrease the font value according to the need. Now, it doesn't matter in which font size that uh, these things are there. One size second in the but I mean, like uh, if I make this, if I make this, uh, let's say 18. So now rest of the things are in 36 color. Right, so if you change those things using the increase font and decrease font, you will see these things are increasing step by step, right, accordingly. So this my will be move from 36 to 48. This word pets, that will be increased if I press once from 18 to 20. All right, same goes with the other things. So what can we do? We can manage the font size to not to be increased or like to be matched with the output, right? So you have to go through what kind of a style that we are going to use during this presentation, right? during this documentation, right? So let us increase this by one. Okay, so then now if you check the uh, values, let me increase it once. Now, another thing, can you notice that the, uh, the, the font type as well as the size is not available? And what could be the reason for this? Different font sizes and styles. Yes, Buddha, come again. 
because of different font sizes and styles yes because of the different font sizes right because because of the different font sizes and styles or types they can't exactly say this particular one belongs to this particular place so when they increase in they are just moving one level up Disregarding what is the size or what is the type that they are having. Right, so if I want, I can change the entire uh, font type of the entire thing. And here, if I take 72. This, this word has a size of 72. And even these, they have gone with the 72 position. Right, so as you can see, it increased by one, like one particular level of the word. All right, hold on. Since I have choose 72 over here, everything comes to 72. If I increase it from here, it has, this is 72 and this is 22. All right, so likewise, we can change the things, right? Maybe these things you may have no, but there can be people who doesn't know about it, right? So that's why I'm, uh, starting from the scratch. Okay, the next one is called the case tool. Right, so before I got the case, I can clear all the formattings. How I'm going to clear all the formattings using this particular value. So let me take this into a one particular side. And then let me make a one single uh, sentence. And now, here in the uh, change case tool, or sometimes we, we call this a case tool. It has different kinds of cases. So it has the morning session. Uh, it has the, uh, uh, the lowercase uh, sessions and the uppercase sessions. Capitalize each word sessions, right? So likewise, there will be different kinds of formattings that you can apply to a particular sentence. Now here, the simple method that I have used is like I have start this from a capital letter and I have a full step at the end. All right, so if I want to change this into like all of them into uh, all of them into a lower case, not the capital case. So we can do it, right? From the change case tool, we can take, I'm sorry, I've taken the uh, upper case. Here comes the lower case. Right, so uh, upper case will do the uh, different, Right, and two more things are there. It is called the sentence case and capitalize each word and the, the, the toggle case. Right, so the, uh, if it is the sentence case, 
sentence case means every sentence in uh, any particular language must start from a capital letter. Like if you take English, it should start from a capital letter. Right, then the rest of the things can be simple and the full stop should be there at the end. Right, so if I change this into the sentence case, only the M of my word, is going, it's not going to be changed. Right, see, only the letter M inside the uh, word my, has the capital letter now, the rest of the things have become simple letters. And there is a, another facility called capitalize each word. See what has happened. Yes, what has happened? Yes, people? What's the change that has happened? First letter of every word has been capitalized. That's right, very good. First letter of every word has been capitalized. So that is what you call capitalize each word. Now in case when you are typing, if you had this requirement, then you can change it, right? We always have in this requirement, sometimes we type the documents. Uh, there will be uh, some particular word which needs to be uh, displayed totally in capital. So in that case, you have to highlight that word and just change the format. Right, you don't need to uh, or delete it and type it uh, from the caps again. Right, yes, Sudan, what you have said is correct. Now, look at this toggle case. Now when the toggle case is pressed, it converts the capital letters into the simple, simple letters into the capital. Right, so those are the cases that we can find. So the sentence case, uh, the capitalize each word, toggle case, lower case, and upper case were there. Okay. All right. Okay. People, give me a second. I'm getting little disturbances today. Hold on for a second. Okay, so the change case tool works like that. And we know about this, 
All right, so uh, this is the uh, clear formatting uh, tool. So if I click on this, this particular tool, it will clear all the formats and uh, take to the uh, the general level or like the uh, uh, the standard formatting into my document. All right. So like before I uh, use that, I'll use these kind of things as well. So then I'm going to clear it because there is something that I need to show you. Like there are some format which does not taken away if I click this clear formatting thing, right? So I'm going to these three things. These are easy. This indicates bold, italic, and underline, right? So if I click on the bold, you can see the uh, width of the letters, right? It, they, are, they are getting thicker, right? Being bolded, right? So likewise. And you can also see, once I apply the boldness, this tool is getting some highlights, right? So that indicates we have applied the bold tool to this particular selected area. And if I press I, it gets italicized, right? It lean to your right a little. And if I press U, you can see underlines have been enabled. And we can change the underline style as well, right? If you want, you can change underline colors if you want, right? And, and you can go for more underlines. If you got the internet connection, they will uh, connect you some underline uh, things that to be uh, taken by the internet. And these are the difference different underlying uh, methods, right? So if we choose this, see it comes like this. And again, uh, when it comes to here, this is called the strike through. Strike through means, uh, literally it's a striking through, right? So that is what you call a strike through. Right now, as you can see, when we apply those formatings, it keeps selected, it, 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 it stay selected to indicate that these things are there in the selection that you have given in the document. So how can I get rid of these things? By clicking on the same tool, it will take out that effect, right? So if I click on the B, baldness is gone. If I click on I, italicize is gone. If I click on U, underline is gone. If I click on ABC, the strike through, it is gone. So it's easy to enable and disable them. And the next two things are called the subscript and the superscript. Right from the icons that you can understand what kind of a thing that they are capable of. Right, so when we are writing a particular uh, what a solution or like uh, let's say uh, some chemical stuff in in your uh, chemical books, like right? or the or the or the science books generally, it's so like. Uh, when you refer to the water, it comes as H2O, right? But if we just type H2O, it's going to be like this. Two is not being uh, taken into down. All right, so to do that, we have to select the two and we choose the super, the subscript, which need to be uh, moved to your down. So then it formats like this. Right, so it goes the same way. And again, uh, be careful when you are having uh, 
different kinds of font sizes in the occasion. Because uh, like when it comes to this point, see, the capital H must be in the uh, like say the same way like like uh, capital H two and O if you if you take all three things H and O stays on the same line and two is like a little bit uh, it push a little bit down and uh, if you are going to write different kinds of things it's going to be the same way what I was alerting is if you just type something on the twos level it's going to be typed as a particular uh, subscript letters. Me subscript with check it out my media then. Right, so because of that, it's better you conscious, keep conscious about this. So then you can get rid of that. Right. And uh, the other one, the one means the superscript tool that is used to indicate a particular date, right? Or a special uh, notice kind of a thing, right? For those things, we will be using the superscript stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sudan, like square in a number. Yeah, that is correct. So if you want to write like uh, S square plus Y square. So if I just type it, right, so Let's take it like this x two plus x square plus y square. So like this is not the way we want. We need these two at the top of the x. So for that we can use right. If we, if we use this, it will become the way we want. Is that clear, everyone? Is it clear so far? Yes. Sir. Right, great. Okay, now the, yeah, before I move to this uh, stylish part, I'll show you the effects by just by taking a one letter. I would like to take your attention into these two things. This one is called the highlighted text. Right, the text highlight color. So it's easy, I can select. Right, so if you are going to give a particular font color, you can use this. Okay, so if you are choosing anything from here, it's going to give you the color of this, right? So I have selected my pets, those two words. So it gives the color. Likewise, we can change the color of the fonts. And as well as, When it comes to the uh, highlighted text color, if I highlighted this, right, then we can change, choose a color for highlighting. And you can see like there are uh, what, limited colors they have used for the highlighting. So I choose, a red color, right? So it's according to your requirement how you are going to manage it, right? And uh, 
Now, earlier, I told you I'm not going for the formatting uh, tool. Uh, so like how it's going to happen, it's like we have to select the entire thing and we just simply click the formatting drawing or like the, uh, all the formats that we have done taken into the base formatting level. Right, so that's the uh, task of the, uh, what this particular clear all format facilities does, right? Okay, people, is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, that's great. And did you notice the highlighted color is not being taken out uh, for some reason? Like uh, it, what what we have to remember is when it is done uh, when when we are done a uh, clear formatting. Highlighted text will not taken out. Uh, will not be taken out by the clear formatting tool. So the uh, final one in that group is called the text effect and typography. Okay, people. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, it suddenly disconnected. I think. Uh, yeah, what is the place that you lose the uh, connection? Did you hear what I said about this highlighted part? Yeah. Yes, Buddha. Yeah, yeah, am I still lagging? Sometimes, sir, uh, not now. Not now, okay, okay. I think there was a problem with the internet connection earlier. That's why I was being disconnected, right? Okay, so like, I, I'll repeat this. So the clear formatting will not taken out the clear formatting. Uh, I'm sorry, the clear formatting thing will not taken out the highlighted part of your content, right? So the text highlighted, the, the the text highlight will not be taken out from the clear formatting tool. Am I lagging again? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah, people, can others confirm? Yeah, they say they, they are telling. It's the same for me. Okay. Like, yes, for, for some reason, uh, my mobile router disconnected. So I just connect with this. Am I clear to you all now? Is it okay? Yes. Yes, others? Is it all right now? Now, okay. Okay. So, like I said earlier, here, when you click the, uh, the clear all formatting button, all the formattings will be reset into the previous or like the very first or like the standard formatting in the word but not the highlighted part, right? So highlighted color will be there, right? So yeah, people give me a second.
Okay, people, sorry for that. Am I still lagging uh, at some places? Everyone? Senilka, am I clear at your place now? Sir, sometimes you are lagging, but sometimes you are not. Not, right, okay. Maybe because of some, I don't think it, it due to the power failures, but uh, because they said there are no power failures around now. We will see, we will see, All right? If, if, if I'm lagging at any moment, uh, either just uh, disturb me by opening the mic or just send me the message, right? Lagging. I'm lagging, right? Okay. Uh -huh. What can I do? Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, people, is it clear? Yes. Right, okay, right, okay. We'll see. All right, so uh, what I was telling is, even though we have taken out the formattings that we have applied, uh, once we click on this clear formatting tool or like the command, it will clear all the formatting other than the highlighting part, right? It will be there. So you have to remember that is how the clear formatting is working. All right, so now I'll show you what this, uh, typography tool is there to do. You can, you can have the idea as well once you look into these things, right? So let me uh, have a word. So I'll select this word and I'm applying. So uh, let me take this. Yeah, how we are going to take a particular word into downwards, we can press the enter button. When we are having a one particular word, we have to go to the starting point of the uh, word and place the cursor over there. Then we have to click. Then we can take that uh, particular word or the sentence uh, into the next line, right? Because enter button will create a new line. So now I have selected this. Once I am going through these predefined formats, you can see it is being changed as the preview shows. Like if you want, you can apply these kind of things which have been predefined or else you can create your own one, right? You can create an outline that you want, right? And if you want to uh, make it a little bit thicker, you can create the weight, or like you can increase the weight, right? And if you want to have the dash lines around it, you can have the dash lines around it, right? So look, like we can do different kinds of things. See, now it's the border is working as a dash line. Right. So if I uh, zoom this up, you can see it clearly. See? 
likewise and then regarding the shadow we can create a shadow right look at this when it is just there it does not have any shadows behind so when i'm placing a shadow as you can see some shadows are being placed right so we can have the shadow as well as what else reflection we can have the reflection so it can take an away from the uh, particular word taken into the particular word all right you can manage as you want as well as uh, let me apply this you can you can make it glow right so if i'm going through the glowings likewise i can apply a glowing whatever we are applying on this word is also applying to the reflection as well automatically right so then now this number styles that is regarding the numbers if you are using numbers right and this these styles are some formatted preformatted types that we can get use without getting this default types of styles all right so that is how this text effect and typography can be used okay is that clear everyone Yes sir. Great. I'm getting a message saying my internet connection is unstable. So am I lagging at your side? Not now sir. Not now. Right okay. Okay so that's what to be done from the uh, font group. So let's go to the paragraph group and see what do we have there? right so the next group that i'm going to talk about is what you call the paragraph group right and it has some this this is called the bullet this is called numbering this is called the multi level list likewise there are different things right so first of all what i'm doing is i'll show you how to create a bulleted list now when you are creating a bulleted list you can create the bullet list and type down the things or else you can type down the things and make it a bullet list right so like if you take several vehicles like car bus and van so we can make this as a bullet list we select all three and we click on here so it becomes a bullet list or else i can just say i can just ask it to put a bullet then i can type my contents right as you can see when i'm moving from one point to another it automatically gives me a bullet right so if i does not need bullets furthermore when i'm having a one enter here when i'm having you know when i press enter just one time it will put you a bullet if i press the enter another time it will cancel the bullet 
right? So that means if you want to type, you need to go on. Otherwise, you can change it. Right. Hold on a second, people. Right. So that is how the bullet list is working. Right. So the same way. Same way, we can create the number list, right? So we can click the number and we can start typing the list. Likewise, so when you need to end the list, you can press the enter twice or else you can press the list and you can see like they have put four automatically. On that case, with this tool, if you want, you can restart the numbering, right? Then you can say a new list. Right, so if we type it without any numbers, we can make it a number list. In case if we want something in between two items, let's say apple and banana. If you want to put mango in between apple and banana, so what we have to do is we have to go to the end of the apple, place the cursor, press enter, then we can go for saying, take mango in between these two. So number list level will be automatically change the numbers when we got any new item in between the existing items. Right, and as well as I'll make this, I, I can change a numbered list into a bullet list in a very easy way. And I can do the other way around as well. If you want to change the bullet list into a number list, you can easily change it. As well as when you are having the bullets, you can change the bullets using these facilities. Now you can see there are many different, very nice bullets are here, right? Like we can use a particular symbol as a bullet, or we can use a particular icon as a bullet like this. Now, if you don't have the things, or, or if you don't have these bullets in your MS Office package or the word with the word, what you can do is you can just import any particular picture or a symbol as one of the bullets. So how to import such? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah, Senelka, uh, for what you are asking is like having one list at your left and another list at your right. Uh, there are ways that we can do. Later, we'll get to know a component called table. So we can draw a table and put things into two cells. Or else we can divide the page into two columns and we can type it, right? I'll show you in the future les lessons, right? So now, if you want to uh, import any particular uh, icon or a particular picture, we have to go for the define new bullets option over here. So once we click on that, we will be given this small window, which shows the symbols, pictures, right? 
So if you want to have a new symbol, I can click on this. So it will give us the symbol font. If you want, you can change the font from here. The, the, all the fonts are here, right? So it generally it gives us the symbol. Right, so from the symbol font, it is specifically created for the symbols. It has different kinds of symbols. So if I want, if I need to take this particular symbol, I can click it and click OK. Choose the specific symbol I want, and I can click OK. So it will become a particular bullet. And once I press OK, this is how it happens. All right. So if I want, I can change it. If I need to take a picture as the bullet, so I have to go with this picture one. Right, so once I click picture, it gives you a browse, it gives you a window to browse where your pictures are. All right, so here, yeah, I think I have taken these two pictures. Okay, let's say uh, what? Let me see something interesting. Um, nope, not here. I think we got something interesting. Okay, yes. Let's say uh, we need this movie PNG, this particular button. So I select that and I can press insert. So it shows me what are the bullets and I press OK. So it changes like that. Right, so likewise, I can have any particular picture as the bullet. So the same way, when it comes to the numbered list, I can change the numbers as I want. So I can have Roman numbers, I can have Hindu Arabian numbers, I can have ABCs, right? So it will. Right now, in case if your list mislead like this, we can adjust the formatting by selecting the list and by using these particular things. Right, so likewise, uh, the small dots or like the small arrowheads that we are having on the ruler will help us to make the alignment. Right, and uh, if we want to change this into a, our own number format, I can go for define new number format. Right. So in the previous time, I have made something like slide number one, slide number two. Right. So I can, if I want, I can uh, go for one, two, three things. And I can say, okay. So those things will be maintained as one, two, three, and four in words. Right. We can change it likewise. So that is the way that the numbers can be handled. And if we want to have sublists inside this, like, like that means like let's say under the bus, we have subcategories. Let's say school bus and the public bus. 
So these are this is this is a different list. Now, if I want to change it into a different list or like a sub list with a different icon, I can choose a different icon for that. Right? And I can change these levels using multi-level list. So now you can see how my multi-level list are being created. Right? So when it comes to the uh, number list, it goes the same way. Likewise. Now, how I'm going to uh, make it like one list under another. I'm going to the very first letter. The cursor will be placed at the very first letter and I can press the tab key, T-A-B, the tab key. Tab key will tab it to the next level. If I want to take it back, I can press Alt and the tab key. I'm sorry, not the Alt tab key, the Shift and the tab key. It will move to the previous level. So to go to the go to level down, like if you want to down the level, you have to press the tab key. If you want to level up, you can press Shift and the tab. Okay, are we through with this, people? Are we clear with this, everyone? Yes. Right, great. So I'll quickly go through the alignment tools so I can uh, give you some homework, send you some homework to the uh, group. Now, this alignment is used to set the alignment of the document, of the content. So as you can see now, this list is there at the left side of the page. If I want to take it into the right side, I can take this right alignment tool right over here. Once I click it, it will be right aligned. So like the right side will be aligned, not the left side. If I want to make it center aligned, I can make it center aligned. So the center will be aligned. Right now, now this of course goes very well with some, uh, some particular paragraph, right? So if I take a small paragraph about Sigiria from this listing, Right, if I paste it over here. Right, now, now this paragraph is left aligned. Only the left side is aligned, but not the right side. If I select it and press the right alignment, so now the right side is aligned, but not the left side. If I press center alignment, neither the right nor the left is going to be aligned, but the center. And if I press the justify, this one, both left and the right are being aligned. Right, so that is how we are going to use the alignment tools with the word, right? Okay, and uh, from this, I can make the spacing. I can increase the spacing, I can decrease the spacing using the line space tool. So if I take a greater value, spacing will be greater. If I take a lower value, spacing will be lower. And using this pane bucket, I can give a shading to a specific paragraph, right? Now, when you apply the shading, it applies to the entire paragraph. Now, if I select this, and if I highlight it, it only goes with the letters. 
not to the entire thing, but when the paragraph is being highlighted, you can see this ash color part is also been highlighted. So, so it takes all the area of the paragraph when it comes to the paragraph color. All right. As well as if you want, you can highlight something like this and place the borders. All right. So like there are different kinds of borders. So if you place the borders, it will place all the borders around it. Right. Okay. So with that, I'm going to end the session for today. So is that clear, everyone? Yes, yeah, sir. Right. Great. Yeah, sir. So I will send you a small practical to the group uh, by tonight. It's kind of a picture. So you have to look into that picture and type it on a, a Word document and do the formattings. Then you should send me send it to me or like email it to me so I can check. Right. So when I'm uh, uploading the uh, exercise, I will send you the email address as well to which particular uh, email address that you need to email your homework. So then we can check and see whether you got it correctly. All right. Okay, everyone. So I'm going to end the session from here only for today. So while we see you on next week uh, for the usual time, which is 325. Right. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a very nice holiday. I'll see you on next week at 3.25. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Right, okay. Have a nice right, okay. Right, okay, right, okay, people. Thank you very much.